Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with Toasty Bros. And today we're gonna to be building or building on this platform of the $450 gaming PC. So this is a very easy to build $450 PC featuring a 1060 SSD and this HP Z440 workstation tower with a six core 12 threaded Xeon in it. Given everything going on, this is a pretty awesome value. But before we talk about that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, Dragon City. Today's video is sponsored by Dragon City. Dragon City is a free to play mobile game for both Android and iOS and is also available on Windows for you PC gamers out there. In Dragon City, there are a ton of dragons you can collect and they have all sorts of different elements for you to combine. So I'm sure there's a dragon out there for you that you'd want to make. The main concept is to pick new dragons and have them breed. And once you hatch that new dragon, you're able to feed it and send it out to train. Once you finish training your dragons, you can fight them in all sorts of different PvP modes or just participate in the weekly events and adventures. The weekly quests come in all sorts of different difficulties, so you can try your hands at all sorts of battles against a ton of different dragons. You get to scout out what you'll be up against, so you always get to bring the right dragon to the fight. You'll have to choose carefully though, because every dragon is unique and has their own abilities and weaknesses. If you're ready to dive into Dragon City, please use the link in the description down below. You'll have a much easier time collecting using our link because it'll give you a head start with some very exclusive rewards. The art style of dragons is super creative and you'll have a blast seeing how many you can get. Good luck in getting your favorite dragons. Personally, the office favorites for us were the Fire Dragon, the Monster Dragon, and the Two-Headed Dragon. And special thanks again to Dragon City for sponsoring today's video. So this video is basically going to be just a simple step-by-step -step guide. We already have the full working computer here. We're just gonna be adding a 1060 and an SSD to get some lightning fast performance. You can get these bad boys on eBay for around $250 to $300. The Xeons that these things come with do vary on eBay. On screen right here, you'll see a listing of the eBay listings that we looked at. There's some that have like 1650 Xeons that are six core and 12 thread, but they're slower. The more specific one we have is E5 2620 V3, which is a six core 12 thread and boosts up to 3.2 gigahertz, which should be good enough for most gaming applications. So uh, how about we not waste any more time, open this thing up and then begin upgrading. All right, so this workstation is really, really cool. You don't see stuff like this very often because you have a massive power supply up here, which oddly enough has individually sleeved cables. And that's a pretty rare thing to see, especially on a pre-built. Another thing that you get is you have two six pin adapters to be able to add your graphics card in. So this will support a 1060. We really don't know the exact watt. Actually, I think it might be 700 watts. 700, that, yeah. I, if that's the wattage, that is insane because it's probably 80 plus and everything. Another really crazy thing about this build that I want to point out is the fact that you get this tower cooler. This really looks similar to like a, a Hyper 212. It's very similar to like what a lot of people want to get into for entry level budget cooling. So I mean, it should keep the Xeon really cool. You also have eight channels for RAM. So you could literally add eight sticks of RAM, you know, running quad channel and everything, which is pretty awesome. Another cool thing is that this is right on the cusp of DDR3. So you get DDR4 with this um, and you get 16 gigs that came with it. So that's pretty cool that we're on the DDR4 most current RAM platform. You do have some extra expansion slots where we can add our graphics. So this did come with an NVIDIA Quadro. This must have been an old rendering or workstation back in the day. You have a lot of SATA cables. You also have pretty cool expansion in the front. You have uh, four USB 3s, you have your audio jacks, um, power button, it does come with a disk drive. There's a couple of spots where you can add some uh, drives as well. It's really insane looking uh, fan grill in the front. Um, and then in the back, you have your typical PS2 ports, two more USB 2s, four more USB 3s, your internet jack, and then two more audio jacks. So. Uh, as far as expansion goes, it's it's pretty up there. Um, the one thing I'm just gonna say to keep in mind, you really can't put this in another case. You could, but it's gonna take a lot of modification. You guys know we do mods and we're not gonna do that. We don't want to because you're gonna have to change quite a few things out to make it work. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is show you how to add the graphics card, which we have right here is a 1063 gig from Zotac and an SSD, which is this silicon power SSD. And we're gonna show you how to upgrade it. Super easy, super simple. Doesn't take too much uh, effort. There you go, that's all you gotta do. Throw it in there. Where's Good the graphics card? Let's go ahead and install Just put it in there, too. install. There we go, right. we're ready to game. Let's do it. All right, guys, let's install this graphics card. What we have right here, again, this is Zotac 1063 gig. The three gig is a good option to go with because most of them only use six pin power. And because you only get a six pin PCI power, or actually two of them, which is kind of weird. Uh, it's really a good idea to go with a card that only uses six pins. So we're gonna go ahead and open this thing up. Of course you can get like adapters and stuff if you want to combine those two six pins to let's say like an eight and six or something like that, you could do that um, and use some of the side of power, but it's recommended just to not make things complicated, you know, make it easy, all right? So we're gonna open this thing up. This is 
nice little card right here. Um, not too big. It's gonna look kind of goofy in here if we're being honest, but you know what? No side panel, you won't see it. But look at that, nice used 1060. These things do vary in price right now, given everything going on in the world. The Graves cards are really hard to find. 1060s are normally like 200 plus sometimes, and at that price, that only makes sense. But if you can get one for around 150 to 170 dollars, which still isn't a great price, it's still better than nothing. So what we're gonna do is go ahead. All you have to do is pop these two clips right here. It's very beautiful. You go boop and boop, and then this part flips out. As you can see right here, it opens and allows us to take out the Quadro that's in there right now. The Quadro is okay. It's just not gonna be doing any gaming, of course. If it's good for just like a display adapter, if you're gonna just be using this for like a normal workstation, but for our purposes, not really worth using. We're gonna set that right there. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and pop this card in. Go in the exact same slot where that Quadro is, or if you're at home and there was no card in there, just be sure to use the 16X slot. We're gonna go ahead and do one of these things. Oh, oh wait, you know what? I did the same thing I did the last video. I did not take out this. If you have a two lane card, you gotta take one of these out. There you go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and, we're doing this at a very weird angle, so just uh, bear with me here. Go ahead don't and slot it in. Just and... go ahead and go to the next video. Boop! There we go, look at that. Yeah, don't go to the next video. Subscribe, like, all that I, fun I stuff. I will say, these right here, you gotta like push it forwards or something. Nice. Yeah, there, there we go. There, there, there. Now it's locked in. And then what you're gonna do, once you have those little locked in pieces right there, you're gonna go ahead and click this back into place and boom, you're good to go. Now all you need is power and we have two options right here. We're just gonna pick this one because this is the closest. Wow, look that at that. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's not, you don't think so? But uh, look at that, such an easy upgrade. GPU in ready to go. Took like forever, obviously. Now Jackson's gonna do the SSD, which is gonna probably take a lot longer. So I just want to point this out real quick. It's really not a, a big deal because this just gets unscrewed. I'm assuming this was actually put here to help hold down graphics cards, but um, with how this is positioned, it does hit your GTX 1060. So it looks like it just uses a Torx bit. You could also fit a flat hit in there to get it out. Um, so let's go ahead and remove that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this plugged in. I'm gonna actually steal the one from the hard drive because it's likely plugged into SATA zero, which, uh, yeah, it is, okay. Um, and it also says drive on it. I don't really know if that's that important, but um, you know, maybe SATA cables were a little different back in the day, but we're gonna take the power and the data cable, go ahead and get those plugged in. Um, before I set it somewhere, I'm gonna go ahead and get the hard drive plugged in. Let's make sure this one also says drive. It says nothing, um, but it is going to say to one, so it should be fine. We're gonna go ahead and add that there, and then we need another power cable. And look at look how convenient that they make this for us. And, Super easy. And boom. All right, so technically you're good to go. I am gonna go ahead and put um, like a singular screw in here because they only gave us one um, drive caddy. So I'm just gonna find like a good spot to screw this into, which I think I'm gonna do it like right here. Actually, I might not be able to. Wait. Maybe. Wait. Worst case, tape is your friend. Double-sided yes, tape. Yes, double-sided tape would work perfect for this. I just, you know, if I can ever use a screw, I pr definitely prefer to use a screw. It looks like I can get in here. I'm using like a short and nubby screwdriver right now too, which might be a little bit difficult for some of you guys. You might have to take out the cooler to do this if you don't have a short and nubby. Oh, look at that. We're actually pretty stable with just one screw. I, I can I can live with this. So you gotta remember solid state drives, no moving parts. It's basically like a USB drive, just a heck of a lot faster. That was really quick and easy. Isn't this just a quick and easy guide? Let's go ahead and test some games on Video it. Video games. Kids. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have the Z4440 upgraded and ready to go, let's talk about some benchmarks real quick. Now, we decided to test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Fortnite, Call of Duty Cold War, and Chow the Tomb Raider. Now, before I get into benchmarks, if you at home are trying to build this PC, here is a couple troubleshooting things I can help you with. If for some reason you're trying to install Windows on an SSD and it does not show up, there's a good chance that your system is still in raid mode. And because of that, you will have to go into the BIOS, which you can see on screen here and disable the eSATA mode from RAID to ACHI, which will allow it to actually show up in Windows or allow you to actually install Windows on SSD in the first place. So unless you're just using the hard drive, which we would not recommend because an SSD makes this thing way faster, I would highly suggest doing that. And also for some weird reason, uh, hyper-threading was disabled on my system. I don't know if that's going to be a default thing for most of the systems you pick up, but just in case, go in and check and make sure you're getting those six cores and 12 threads so you can get some really good performance. Now with all that 
out of the way, this system was pretty straightforward to put together, and in Fortnite on Pro settings, we got well over 100 plus FPS. The limiting factor in games like Fortnite on lower settings is the E5 2620v3, because its clock speed only goes up to about 2.7, 2.8 gigahertz, which is a lower clock speed, but getting over 100 plus FPS on a $450 PC in Fortnite is still a pretty impressive task, and you could easily run this on a 144Hz monitor and have a pretty good experience. The 6 cores and 12 threads give you a lot more room to do multitasking. You probably would get similar numbers with a 1060 and something like an i5-3470 or even a second gen i5, but you are getting that extra headroom to do things like potentially live streaming or just have stuff up on a second tab, and the built-in 16 gigs of RAM really does help a lot with some higher end games which you see here in just a second. Now let's talk about a higher end game, Call of Duty Cold War, and on medium low settings we actually average well over 70 FPS most of the time. You could easily raise this to let's say like medium settings all the way around and probably get a lock 60 FPS experience, and the limiting factor right now was actually the 1060. So in theory you could get a better GPU, even though you probably don't have the option right now given everything going on, but you could get a better GPU and probably get a 100 plus FPS experience in Call of Duty Cold War before the E5 2620 becomes a bottleneck. This is a very impressive result and one of the reasons why I recommend this system over something like an Optiplex now because even with the lower end Optiplexes that you may upgrade with like an i7-2600 or one of those E3-1220-1230 Xeons, you're getting a lot more performance for just a little bit more money in a workstation tower that has a really awesome cooler and the ability to upgrade to even a higher end Xeon if you wanted to, which are really cheap right now. So I think these Z440s are really slept on right now and could be a really awesome option for your next budget. PC if you're not looking to build something new outright, which is really hard to do right now. And the last game we tested was Shadow the Tomb Raider, and on medium settings we started to see where the 1063 gig is actually holding us back a little bit more. We only averaged about 60 FPS, but getting 60 FPS on a AAA title at medium settings on this $450 PC, which with a little bit of deal hunting you could probably get under $400, it's really impressive. The only limiting factor with upgrading GPUs in this thing is the power supply. The power supply has 700 watts, it's really good in that regard, but it only comes with two 6-pin power connectors. So in theory, unless you want to do some modding and maybe use like a SATA to 8-pin adapter or something of that nature, which can be a little bit sketchy, what you might want to do is just wait for newer generations of cards that are like 1650 super level or cards like a 1060 that only require 6-pin power, which is perfectly adequate, and for a system like this, 1060 is great. You could probably get like some 1066 gigs that only require 6 pin power and a few other cards out there, but for the value you're getting, it's a way better option compared to an Optiplex. Yes, Optiplexes still have their place for really, really cheap PCs, $100, $200 PCs, but around the $400 price point for absolutely everything, getting a 512 gig SSD, a 1 terabyte hard drive, the 6 cores and 12 threaded Xeon that is slightly upgradable, plus the 1060, I mean, you really cannot complain. Only complaint I could see people saying is that the case is pretty ugly which it's not that bad compared to some other Optiplexes out there, but you are stuck in this case, so don't comment down below saying if you can case swap, you're pretty much stuck in this case because of proprietary power connectors, so don't even think about that. But overall, I'm incredibly happy with this PC for the money. I was really down on the PC market with everything going on in the world, but actually being able to put this thing together and see it perform the way that it does gives me a lot of confidence to go back into the used market and try to find similar workstations like this and try to turn them into gaming rigs. We most certainly will be doing a full setup with this PC because it's so awesome. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss that video. So overall, incredibly happy with this PC for the money. How about go ahead and bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. So even though this PC was a pre-built, it did really well. A lot of people don't know about these server workstations that have Xeon processors in them that could be really used for anything. They were kind of marketed for doing like really high-end editing and rendering back in the day, but hey, now they're just like any other office PC and uh, most people aren't buying them because they don't understand Xeon. And I really like the fact that these are actually relatively available and they come with a wide range of USB ports. That's a good benefit compared to some of these other pre-builds that kind of lack in that department. And the fact that it comes with a power supply that's ready for a graphics card upgrade. Having a 700 watt power supply that you can slap in a 1060 in works really well. There are some downsides because it only has the six pin power connector, but you could adapt that to make it work 
for a slightly higher end GPU. But overall, these things are an awesome value. We'll try our best to link in the description down below some of the other options out there. We haven't seen a ton of the ones with the exact Xeon in this, but there are some 1600 series Xeons, like the 1650s and stuff like that, that you can pick up as well. So link in the description down below. And also, if you just don't feel like building one of these, you might want to check out PCBros.tech because we'll have a couple of them ready to go uh, that will be tested, confirmed working, and will perform awesome. Big thanks again to Dragon City for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check the link in the description down below and download it right freaking now. So if you guys haven't already, do not forget to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. So as Matt mentioned earlier, if you guys want to pick up a PC just like this and you're not really too confident in building it, you're having trouble finding one on eBay, all kinds of different reasons, we have our own website where we build and sell PCs. And it is called PCBros.tech. It's a great place to get access to some PCs and get certified Toasty Bros computers. So yeah, be ready for that. Link in the description down below.